you. Yes. So welcome uh, to the talk of Jens Weber. So he will talk about Great Press, a computational notebook for graph transformation. So please, Jens. All right. Thank you, Inga, for the nice introduction. So this is the, I assume, experimentation part of that session uh, on probabilistic system experimentation, the tools paper. And it's about yeah, a computational notebook type tool for graph transformations. And most of you will probably have seen or played with computational notebooks. Uh, some of you may not. Uh, this is a definition of a computational notebook uh, from Martin Fowler's blog website. It's defined as an environment for writing prose documents that allows the author to embed code, which can be easily executed with the results incorporated into the document. And there are um, uh, increasing, there's increasing interest in using these for experimentation. Um, uh, there are products that are well known, uh, Jupyter, Interact, Colab, and Google. Uh, Wolfram was actually one of the original inventors of the idea uh, with Mathematica. And here is just a um, example screenshot from Martin Fowler's blog about R Studio, where um, he just embeds a little bit of uh, some comments saying, okay, this here's some prose um, area in markdown syntax, some code fragment here, some visualization part there that is interactively updated when you update your code and then continue to write some prose. And the value proposition for these computational notebook tools is that you can integrate note-taking documentation of experiments with interactive exploration. It makes your um, experiments executable and repeatable. It helps collaboration and there is a shallow learning curve. So a low threshold of entry allows non-expert or lay persons to actually play with these um, notebooks as well. There are popular applications in data science, science in general, AI and engineering. So um, there are some limitations with current tools. The existing computational notebook tools do not support graph transformations. And the existing graph transformation tools, they don't really support the computational notebook paradigm. They, they are often heavy weight in the sense that um, you know, it's not that easy potentially to get them going and installing uh, as opposed to pretty, potentially just open a web browser. Sometimes have a steep learning curve. Uh, they do cater to uh, developers. Um, they have this either this IDE paradigm or uh, domain specific language paradigm, but mainly geared towards computer scientists. So I've done, we've done in, in our group, a previous work on GRAPE. GRAPE is this uh, graph replacement and persistence engine that we discussed the ICGT 17 and the tools track. It is an internal DSL to closure. It is, um, it was integrated, you can use it with any kind of tool, but it was integrated uh, specifically with uh, the light table IDE and uh, the InstaRapple plugin. So it did support already some sort of a visualization, inline visualization of the graph transformation rule definitions. And here's a screenshot from the ICGT 17 tool paper that, that shows that again, and you may recall that if you were in that session. So uh, here's the, uh, here's a textual rule definition and the, the graphical representation of that tool, um, of that rule, uh, is just generated. And that's uh, just put into the, overlaid into the IDE and it's not really part of the document. So I, I won't really have time to uh, discuss the syntax so much, but uh, just give you an idea. So that was pre-existing work. There is um, a little bit of an overview of the, the grape language. So we're supporting directed attributed node and edge labeled graphs. The rules uh, can be chosen to be either with SPO or DPO semantics. We have application conditions, negative application conditions. 
There are a couple of elements on this list here that are bolded, and those are some elements that came into uh, the language development after the ICGT 17 paper because the great language also evolved. So we have now path expressions, also have optional graph elements, thing called merged graph elements, which are essentially created ones that are only created if they're not already there in the graph. Control structures and transactions, backtracking. We have we can show us between isomorphic and homomorphic matching semantics. And also in the interest of exploration, we don't have to have a type graph. So it's this notion of being schema less, but we do also support graph constraints. So you can have as much schema constraints as you want. And that's also new since the uh, 17 paper. So the objective for this now is to extend a computational notebook tool to support graph transformations. And my third objective is to call it Grape Press, because I like to make wine. Yeah, so um, the, um, the search was on then for an open source computational notebook tool that supports closure since we had Grape, and we found um, uh, the, uh, the Gorilla REPL tool by Johnny Hudson and later other contributors that resurrected it as uh, another project called the Pink Gorilla. It's a browser-based tool, uh, like many other computational notebook tools. And uh, what we did for extensions to Gorilla was to uh, provide visualizations for graph transformation rules, the, um, the visualization of graph query results, of course, as actual graphs, we extended Grape as well with the ability to um, output graph queries. And then uh, the entire thing, of course, is browser based. So uh, if you have a uh, Grape Press server somewhere, then you can just open a browser and use the tool, similar to other computation notebooks. So, very, very low level of um, uh, getting started. Uh, but the, of course, to get a server going, uh, we package the entire um, GradePress server with uh, Vagrant virtual machines and make it really easy to get it going. So here's a just a first um, impression of how something like this looks like. This is the uh, starting point of uh, about 45 pages long Grape language tutorial, which is also at the uh, GradePress uh, GitHub site. You see, we have uh, these, these prose elements, these textual elements. Um, they're just authored with markdown or extended markdown. There's some static elements here. Then we have a dynamic element here, which has consists of a code fragment and in a rendering of the result of the, the code. So any code fragment, any closure code fragment can be put in here, as well as the, the grape DSL. There's a very simple rule definition, which in this case just uh, reads out, um, has to find a, a node of type person, of label person. And if that's found, uh, then, um, um, oh no, sorry, sorry about that. Um, the, the visualization of the rule is then automatically generated here. And then the application of a rule is just calling that rule and in this case, there is no such note in the graph, so it shows false. It's less than a rendering of the result. So we've um, used Great Praise uh, since um, we created it in several real world projects. And the one that is highlighted in the paper and in this talk is on detecting temporal conflicts in drug prescriptions. So this is the idea that in particular seniors uh, may have uh, many prescriptions. They may come from different caregivers and you just want to make sure that um, these prescriptions don't conflict temporally. Now, it's not so important to really understand. Yeah, sorry, um, to interrupt. Uh, can you go back to the previous slide? I was just trying to understand something. Um, uh, I, I, can, can we do that later? Michael? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Is it because I what I used it doesn't really easily allow me to go back. Okay. No, okay. So the question is, which graph are you evaluating this against? 
So, so I mean, obviously, do you do you have to provide a graph or a database as a background to execute? So, the... Yeah. So sorry, yeah, I should have said that. Um, uh, Grape, uh, the the persistence, the P stands for persistence. Uh, Grape actually stores uh, graphs in Neo4j in a, in a graph database. Okay. So you use you say that that's the you say this is the graph that I'm using. So you name the graph, and then you you just that's the graph. So it is, there is a, a a state in the background in the database. Yeah, I should have said that. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry for not being able to go back, but uh, I'll do that afterwards. Um, questions, and I also have on another browser the the great um, language tutorial, so we can look at that too if we're interested. So the the application here. Um, Again, in, in uh, drug prescriptions, and I'm not explaining it in much detail. It's just more this notion of, um, well, uh, one example of using GrayPress uh, together with um, domain experts uh, from the medical field. We have a physician involved here. We have a health information scientist and so on. They don't really deal. And, and I have a grad student, of course, who's never seen graph transformations before, but we're discussing these kinds of transformations experimentally with a tool like that. And, it seems to um, be quite understandable. So the entire um, specification of this, what's called a worksheet in computational uh, uh, notebook uh, speak is uh, also at this GitHub address that you can see here. So you can check it out uh, yourself too. These are just a couple of excerpts here. Uh, this is the start of that um, worksheet page. Uh, this is again just static elements, but it also shows that, uh, for example, this this diagram here, uh, which you could could say is a, the meta model or the, the the yeah type model for the graph, which we say is uh, not necessarily typed for grape or for grape press, but you can still describe it, and it's uh, generated from Mermaid, so it's extended Markdown language, and you can use the uh, the Markdown um, Mermaid extension and have that generated and put. put as part of your static elements. You see a couple of um, typed uh, notes here and edges. Um, we can actually import other worksheets and other closure programs in uh, these GradePress sheets as well. And in particular here, we're importing a parser, a very simple parser that uh, we've built to um, parse in and generate these start graphs from prescriptions, from medical prescriptions. So here's, uh, for example, this is the import, right? And here is a, uh, a require statement, require A1, which may be some action to uh, administer a, a medication for three weeks every second day, administer one to two tablets or one to two. Right? And it creates this um, the starting point, uh, the um, temporal frame graph that we um, created in this previous model here. And again, I'm, I'm not um, explaining that graph structure, it's more uh, the idea that, okay, so you can parse it in, and then you have in GradePress um, a command browse, and it shows you interactively the state of that graph. Uh, so this may be a little small, I'll zoom in on the next slide. So but this is the, the next part of that worksheet. So you have, um, you know, in your notebook documentation, maybe some documents about your thinking about how to now create a graph algorithm. And here are six steps, uh, unroll duration, split subframe, unroll frame, connect subframes, filter iteration, and create time points. Again, I'm not explaining that in detail, but the only thing that I'm explaining right now is that we've chosen for this to say, we do this temporal conflict analysis based on simple temporal networks. There is a simple temporal problem for um, time scheduling conflict analysis, um, which you may or may not be familiar with, but it's a graph-based algorithm, which is essentially uh, um, it's a Floyd Marshall algorithm that, that tries to find negative um, uh, distances in, uh, in these uh, SDN graphs. And if there are some, then you have a conflict, a temporal conflict uh, that um, doing all of these prescriptions over the day with all the uh, constraints is actually mission impossible. And that's what we're after here. Right? So we're creating a couple of steps to, to translate um, these uh, high-level graphs that we had here in these simple temporal networks in these steps. And then um, these, these steps are defined with um, 
with rules again in uh, rape uh, uh, syntax. So this is just gonna give you a flavor again. This is zooming in on this previous slide. Uh, the rule definition here um, uses a couple of advanced um, rape uh, language elements such as, um, again, this is the visualization of that rule. We have a negative application condition here, we have a node that we're creating, we have a, an application condition, and we have a path expression. And again, not explaining the language uh, here right now in detail, but we can maybe ask questions about this. And then uh, interactively uh, in the next part of the worksheet, we can look at the results so we can uh, call the rule. And, and actually here we're using a uh, closure control structure while, while it's possible to unroll duration. So one, we're calling this rule multiple times as much as possible. Um, we're doing that and then browse and browses the result. So we see the result graph here after that unroll duration step. And then, uh, okay, so the worksheet goes on. Um, I abbreviated this uh, for the purpose of this talk. And we can, of course, create um, functions, closer functions to wrap all of these in a uh, single function, all of these steps that we've defined here. So we have um, um, the, the, the parser that creates this. Um, RTF graph, and then we have those seven steps, unroll duration, split subframe, unroll frame, connect subframe, so on. And um, uh, then uh, we can call these and uh, uh, easily in the, in the worksheet as well, do our experimentations with different prescription sets and so on. And then um, this, this slide here, uh, this example here just shows you um, how it's um, easily possible as well to create queries with GradePress to show only parts of the graph because at some point in time, if you just call browse, that graph becomes too big. So this is a uh, read-only query rule with Grape that only um, reads out those uh, TP nodes. Um, TP nodes are the time point nodes in the simple temporal network graph. So here we're, we're creating a, a rule that just reads out these TP nodes. And then we're creating just a simple function here, browse TP, which calls this query, query um, rule, uh, calls matches, which is just a built-in function to give you the matches of a rule, and view, which is a built-in function that allows you to view or browse the result of these matches. And then you can just call in your worksheet that function and browse the TP rules, these time points. The, only the, the subgraph of these time point nodes that are truncated this picture. It's um, it's larger in the, the GitHub site because of the presentation here. Uh, and then uh, this is just an example of the notebook uh, where the experimenter wrote down this transformation result looked good, except that the last time point should not be there. Our filter iteration step should have removed this time frame, but did not since there is no next node for the last frame. So there's a bug in the graph program, right? So to, to do, we need to fix this. <laughs> I, I put this in here just to say, you know, this is the kind of discussion that we have when we develop these graph algorithms, um, graph transformations with, with this experimentation, with this exploration tool. Okay, so there's just many uh, works related, and I don't go through all the um, graph transformation tools that have been created in the community. Um, great work there that's referenced in the paper. I do want to mention uh, some other related work here. Um, Peter van Gorp and co workers have also worked on this share project on essentially creating what they call executable research papers. Um, a web portal for um, really having virtual machines and, and making making research papers executable. That is related because ultimately um, we see GradePress as also potentially a way to create executable workshop research papers from a different perspective. A little bit, you write your paper and you also have your execution steps and you can interact with it. And 
In fact, the, uh, the, the grape press language tutorial is completely executable. If you load that worksheet, you can, you can run it and you can go through the, uh, the in instructions there. Uh, the, um, this, this, this paradigm of computational notebooks that we're after is uh, described uh, in this paper, for example, by Oaks and co-authors here. Then, of course, the previous work on GRAPE. Um, and the GRAPE tool is related here, too. So uh, at this point, I'm, I'm summarizing and um, I'm concluding a little bit here. So uh, we, we have used GRAPE Press um, in several industrial applications. Um, also, um, at least I know of, uh, at least one company that uses it. Uh, as well for industrial applications, in particular on safety analysis, hazard analysis of systems. It is, in my view, uh, a tool that's useful for early stage exploration and problem solving. Uh, grape press worksheets are actually completely valid closure programs. So you can actually just easily import them as well into your production software, but maybe that's not what it's meant to do. Uh, what we would like to do in the future is to offer a great press service in the cloud so that it, without even using a vagrant virtual machine system, you can just go to some URL, great press URL, and just um, fire up a browser and experiment. So that's my presentation. Thank you very much, Jens. Uh, do we have some questions or comments from the audience? Maybe